Welcome everyone. My name is Faryal Ahmed and I'm the associate expert at the United Nations Statistics Division. This webinar is the 23rd in a series hosted by the UN Statistics Division as part of the run up of the UN World Data Forum. The forum aims to foster cooperation and open dialogue among government, civil society, the private sector, and other groups to spur data innovation, mobilize high level political and financial support for data, and build the pathway to better data for sustainable development. Before we dive in, a few housekeeping notes. Uh, we will use the chat function to communicate during the webinar. You'd see a chat window on the right, uh, right hand side of the window um, uh, for you to leave any comments or interact with each other. Um, we received a large number of questions that we have uh, that have helped us shape the conversation today. And we've picked a few of these that uh, the panelists will address later. The panelists will also respond to some of the questions that will come through the live chat in the second half of the webinar. So please feel free to leave your questions in the chat window and we'll pick a few at the end of the session. Finally, uh, let's find out who is in our virtual room today. Uh, so I invite you to use the chat function. If you see the icon that looks like a speech bubble there, and uh, just type in two words, the country you're joining from and the sector you represent, that is, it could be an NSO, it could be a private sector, international organization, and so on. Um, so our topic for today is the upcoming UN World Data Forum 2021 and what to expect. Uh, following the last year's postponement of the in-person meeting of the forum, the forum is now set to take place in a hybrid format uh, from the 3rd to the 6th October in Bert, Switzerland. Today, we have a very um, inclusive group here who has been uh, working on the forum um, since the past couple of years. And so we have the organizers of the forum, including the members representing the host country, the program committee, the UN secretariat for the forum who are here to provide an overview of the forum and also address your questions. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of questions considering the current situation in the world. So before we turn it over to, to them, um, let's see um, who we have in the virtual room here. So I see colleagues from Bangkok, from Nepal, from Bulgaria. We have um, participants from Rome, Kigali, uh, representing different organizations um, we have from Finland and so on. So thank you for everybody for joining and uh, being here with us uh, in this very exciting uh, webinar and uh, the panel we have here. To start us off, I'm pleased to introduce Gabriela Vokovic, uh, who is the president of the Hungarian Central Statistical Office. She is the chair of the UN World Data Forum Program Committee member, which is responsible for guiding the design of the forum program. Gabriela also served as a member of the program committee for the first and the second UN World Data Forum and as a chair of the 2020 World Virtual Forum. Uh, over to you, Gabriela. Thank you, Fariyal. I would also like to extend my warm welcome to everybody who is right now in the uh, webinar. I see we are about 170 people, which is really great. And as Faria mentioned, from all over the world, really, uh, which is really the aim of uh, the forum also, to have as many participants as possible and uh, from as many countries as possible. Uh, as you know, the uh, uh, UN World Data Forum uh, 2021 will be in uh, Bern. Uh, it will be hosted by the Federal Statistical Office of, Swiss, of Switzerland, and the dates are very important, 3 to 6 October 2021 in Bern and in a hybrid format. Uh, we have a very rich program. Uh, Francesca will tell you a bit more about uh, the details of the program. Uh, and I would like to thank our session organizers who responded to the call for sessions. Uh, and they submitted a lot of proposals and very valuable proposals to the program committee. And I would also like to thank the program committee members who worked a lot on uh, uh, scrutinizing, screening, uh, 
discussing, um, getting uh, deeper knowledge about the various session proposals and selecting um, uh, the appropriate number of sessions, which we will also talk about later. Um, this was really a lot of work because uh, so many very good proposals were uh, submitted to the call. And uh, of course, we have a limited uh, time uh, frame for the whole uh, forum. So it was uh, we had to select and it was sometimes very painful to select uh, the ones that we did select. Uh, as, as I mentioned, this will be a hybrid forum and we decided on the hybrid format, uh, partly based on the uh, success of the previous of the virtual uh, World Data Forum last year. But of course, we also had to think about the pandemic situation, which is very uncertain. We don't know yet what the situation will be uh, at the beginning of October. Uh, so a hybrid format is certainly a very uh, good and convenient uh, for all cases, uh, even for the worst case scenarios, which we hope uh, we can avoid. In the uh, virtual uh, forum, we had uh, uh, over 10,000 registered participants, which is really an enormous number, as you can imagine. And uh, they came from more than 180 countries, which again is it covers basically the whole uh, globe. Um, and we hope, of course, that this year we can uh, have something like that. Uh, the hybrid format will allow uh, presence, uh, personal presence in the forum. And uh, of course, those who cannot uh, or are afraid to or are limited in uh, in uh, traveling for any reason, uh, they can uh, join uh, the virtual part of the of the forum. I think this is very important because it makes it very much inclusive, uh, the whole forum very much inclusive. Uh, so uh, even uh, those participants who for for uh, financial or personal or health reasons cannot uh, travel, they will be able to be there to benefit from the very rich program that we have put together. And uh, they will also have the opportunity to meet, well, if not face to face, but at least to meet on the screen and uh, get uh, personal um, uh, personal information about uh, uh, the presenters, the session organizers, and the participants. Uh, the registration uh, for the in-person uh, participation is currently open. It will be open until the uh, 31st of August. And uh, uh, you can uh, see the details of uh, registration on the website of the forum. Uh, registration for the virtual participation will start on uh, in September. Uh, and uh, there you will uh, have uh, you, you will see the uh, content of the program of the platform and um, you will uh, see the forum sessions also uh, and also the virtual networking space. Uh, in addition to the uh, uh, to the previous uh, uh, sessions or, or to the previous formats, uh, we uh, decided to introduce a call, uh, to host uh, local meetups uh, to, to ensure more uh, equitable and, uh, and inclusive participation. And the local organizers are welcome to host a local meetup that takes place in parallel with the uh, UN World Data Forum. I welcome you all to participate uh, either virtually, virtually or in person and be part of this really great event, uh, which uh, will give us all the opportunity to discuss uh, with various actors of the uh, data ecosystem uh, of the world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Gabriella, for giving us an overview and uh, providing what went uh, behind, behind the organization of the forum. Um, so I've also put in some links in the chat window uh, for the registration to attend for the in-person uh, participation as well as the local meetup. Uh, please feel free to browse through the website to get more details and which also provides a link to other pages which would be important for you to uh, you know, gather all the information. So now I'll pass it on to our next uh, speaker, um, who is Francesca Perucci. Uh, she is the Assistant Director of the Development Data and Outreach Branch 
at the UN Statistics Division. Uh, Francesca Perucci oversees the work on global development monitoring, open data, data integration, dissemination, and other global data initiatives. She has been driving force for the UN data for World Data Forum from the Secretariat side. Over to you, Francesca. Thank you, Faryal, and hello, everybody. A very welcome, very warm welcome to all of you. It's uh, my great pleasure to talk about the UN World Data Forum today. Uh, this is a journey we started uh, just a short few years ago in 2017 with the first forum in Cape Town, hosted by the Government of South Africa and Statistics South Africa. Uh, a lot has changed in these short few years uh, with the big transformation of the data landscape and the rapid modernization of many national statistical systems around the world. But, but the data forum uh, continues to be a critical space uh, for data actors and users from different communities to come together, share ideas and solutions, uh, and, and together chart the way for the continuous improvement of data production uh, and use. And over the last couple of years, of course, we've seen a dramatic uh, transformation of, of, of the data work because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, both in a, in, in a good, in a positive and a negative way. Unfortunately, you know, many, uh, we had to learn uh, some important lessons uh, very fast uh, on how to, how to work with data uh, and how to be creative with, uh, with our solutions. And we can benefit from that experience. Since the beginning, uh, the forum's programs has been set around six thematic areas. Uh, over the years, the program committee of the forum uh, uh, and the high level group for partnership coordination and capacity building, which oversees the organization of the forum, is a group of member states of national statistical offices, chief statisticians of national statistical offices. Uh, they have agreed to maintain the same thematic areas with minor adjustments. Why is that? Uh, the forum is not just an event. The forum is really a continuous process of work with the community coming together on a regular basis with activities, exchanges, continuing after each meeting. So the thematic areas somehow provide the necessary framework and, and continuity. Uh, and I'd like to uh, look at, at what they are. Uh, as I said, you know, if you read the details of what they contain and those, those, uh, that material is accessible on the, on the website, you see, you know, that has evolved over the years slightly, but the, the, main, the main topics remain the same. And the thematic area one is about capacity development and new approaches to capacity development and how we can uh, improve the way we, we, uh, we organize capacity development activities together for better data. Thematic area two is on innovation and synergies across data ecosystems, how the different data communities come together and share and, and merge their skills and experiences to, to create the best data solution, solutions. Thematic area three is on leaving no one behind. And this everybody knows, this is at the basis, the essence of the uh, 2030 agenda. And this is tremendously important, how we ensure that data are on everybody and for everybody. And thematic area four is on how we use the data and how we understand the world and how we use data to inform our actions, our policies, our interventions. And thematic area five, tremendously important, especially over the last few years with the acceleration of adoption of new data solutions, of technologies, of more use of uh, data from the private sector, uh, building trust in data and statistics. You know, of course, using those new data solutions come with challenges and, and building uh, the trust in the data we use is, is very important. And the last area, thematic area six, has always been the area where we focus on what have we, what we've done and what we need to do to move forward. Uh, and that is normally uh, the area that is, uh, brings together the key actors the ones who are sort of responsible, who are the ones who, who are uh, launching the, the main initiatives, uh, in, including some of the international agencies and of course the high level group for partnership coordination and capacity building, which as I said, is the group of countries that lead this effort. Uh, so the forum uh, uh, sessions that uh, were mentioned by Farial and, and Gabriella, 
and the high level plenaries are organized within the six broad thematic areas. And this year we have actually seven high level plenary sessions. Uh, normally we have one per thematic area, but this year we have an extra one to address a very important topic on really looking at how data really affect people's lives. And that is an, an extra thematic um, uh, plenary, high level plenary organized uh, thanks to the uh, inputs of the host country. It's really uh, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland and, and the Swiss colleagues who have been uh, taking the lead in organizing that. So uh, thanks to them for, for doing that and covering such an important topic. Uh, in particular, the, the, the area, uh, the plenaries uh, on each thematic areas, uh, I can, we can uh, quickly uh, go through. Uh, the titles, uh, have we been going, ha, have we been going about capacity development the wrong way? That's the title of area one. So it's really a reflection on whether or not we've been doing a good job in addressing capacity development needs. So it's going to be very interesting, a very interesting debate on that. Area two is on, on innovation, is focusing in particular on timely data for COVID-19 and on accelerating the implementation of the SDGs. Area three is on the need to measure equity. Area four, plenary uh, session for area four, is on making it add up, counting on data and statistics during pandemics and other disasters. So again, the focus will be on how we use data to address the specific needs in case of disasters and, and in particular on, on the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Thematic area uh, five, trust in data, balance equality, privacy, and transparency. As I mentioned earlier, you know, this is looking at how we use new data sources and how we ensure that in doing so, we balance the quality, the need for quality, and the uh, privacy and, and, and protecting privacy and transparency while making the best use of the data available. And then, of course, the road from Bern uh, and navigating the data future. So what do we do? and how do we go from here? Uh, area seven, uh, thematic area uh, seven, uh, plenary session seven is on data for accountability to the people. And as I said earlier, this is the one organized by the Swiss colleagues uh, and it's very important looking at really what the impact uh, of data is on people's uh, lives, which is at the basis really of the work we do. Uh, and every forum, the global data community also produces an outcome uh, to chart the next steps. Uh, we started in uh, Cape Town uh, with the global action plan for data for the 2030 agenda, which provided the initial framework for action uh, in some key uh, strategic areas, continued at the second forum in Dubai, uh, at, in the UAE in 2018 with the Dubai Declaration. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. It's an urgent call for increasing funds for data and establishing a, a new financing facility. And then last year, the virtual forum with the data community's uh, response to COVID-19, which uh, in, in recognition that during the pandemic, the demand for data and statistics are greater than ever, really appeals to the whole data community to come together to support the response to the COVID-19 pandemic and accelerate action uh, on the sustainable development goals. It also renews the call made in the Dubai Declaration for in, uh, an innovative funding mechanism uh, to help implement the Cape Town Global Action Plan. Uh, and at the forum this year on 6 October, uh, an outcome statement again will be launched with a call to action to develop data capacity, establish partnerships, uh, produce data to leave no one behind, ensure data are presented in a timely, open and impartial manner, and build trust. So as in uh, previous cases, the outcome is the result of contributions uh, from, from the wider data community. An open consultation on the outcome statement is ongoing, and we very much look forward to receiving your views and suggestions uh, with the deadline of Monday, September 13th uh, this year. So we still have some time, about uh, uh, less than a month, uh, so we very much uh, look forward to your contributions and encourage you to send uh, your views and inputs. So this is all I wanted to share today, uh, but I very much uh, look forward to your questions and really hope to see you all in Bern in just a little less than two months. Uh, we are grateful uh, to the Swiss government and in particular to our dear colleagues in the Swiss Statistical Office uh, for the tremendous efforts of the last two years. It's not an understatement to say that uh, 
These were difficult uh, circumstances, uh, but they've remained committed to ensure that the forum is a great success. So I'm very thankful and, and we really appreciate, I, I'm sure I speak in, on behalf of the whole community, we're very grateful for their, for their work and their commitment. So I know you all have a lot to contribute uh, and by coming together in Bern, we can really move the agenda forward and, and make better data for all in reality. Thank you so much, over to you, Fariel. Thank you so much, Francesca, for going, giving us that quick overview of the program. And um, as you mentioned about the open consultation, I've uh, put in the link for the open consultation in the chat window. Um, we would be really grateful for your inputs uh, in framing the outcome document for the forum. So please, please send your inputs to us by September 13th um, uh, for the uh, open consultation. Um, so, um, moving on now, I would uh, turn to our next uh, speaker, who is um, who is uh, from the, the Switzerland uh, side of the host, host country of the World Data Forum. So, uh, Benjamin Rothen, who is the Head of International and National Affairs at the Swiss Federal Statistical Office in the Federal Department of Home Affairs and the host of the UN World Data Forum 2021. Uh, over to you, Benjamin. Thanks, Fariel, and hello from Switzerland to everybody. It's great to have so many people here on this uh, webinar. And uh, as Francesca said, it's less than two months. It's exactly 45 days we will sitting together uh, having the opening. So that's, that's great. And of course, um, not everybody will be there in person, but uh, as Francesca and Gabriela, Gabriela also said, we will work all on that to have a very inclusive conference to bring in you wherever you will be. Maybe you have to get up two in the morning. That's, that's the price we have to pay if we have a hybrid conference, uh, but to, together. Uh, maybe you can go to the first slide, uh, Paul. Yeah, so uh, as you know, we coming from Dubai and uh, we had in, in, in March 2020, we had the UN Statistical Commission, and that, that was one of the last UN conference uh, before the pandemic and uh, everybody uh, everything shut down. So the UN World Data Forum is not the first UN conference in person or in hybrid form, but it's one of the first. And I think we're quite proud on, uh, on that. And of course, we have to, uh, we have to learn in that, uh, during that time um, because uh, it's, it's, it was difficult for us too, as uh, Francesca mentioned, I want to underline that, but uh, uh, we are working on that to have it a, a big success. Um, for us, for Switzerland, it was all time important to have a sustainable conference. And that's why we have the road to burn. I'm pretty sure you are fam familiar with that. And we started in January 2020 at the World Economic Forum. And we thought it will take about 10 months but now it takes one year and 10 months. And, uh, uh, but the good part in that we had a lot of time to prepare the UN World Data Forum and all the different outcomes we will have. And I think we'll have it maybe in discussion a bit later on, but uh, uh, the Burn Data Compact, Compact is an answer on the Cape Town uh, Global Ac Action Plan, as well as the Dubai Declaration. So in, we invest the time and, and hours uh, to have answers to that and we will launch that and we'll present that in Bern. And uh, I think that's that's important for us. Uh, as Francesca said, it's a process. Uh, we want to have clear outcomes at the forum and we will have that. Currently we're counting on 600 plus participants to have it in Bern um, and uh, to, to mingle at the end because it's important to at, for the UN World Data Forum it's important to meet new partners. That's exactly one of the key aim to see different views. Um, what are data producers thinking about uh, sustainable development? What are data users and private producers are thinking? So that's, that was very important to us to have that. Um, uh, we have heard a lot about the program uh, a bit and we'll have seen it for sure more, but maybe I can convince you a bit uh, to come to Switzerland. Maybe you can go to the next slide and uh, there you can see the, the venue and you can see it's a very open space venue with, with a lot of daylight. And on the left side, you can see a tweet from Shaida Badi. I'm pretty know you all know her. And that was when we had a Paris 21 conference in April 2018. And she made this statement. And based on the statement, we selected the, the venue because I think she has a lot of experience and and 
as you see on the lower right part, that's the open space bit where we'll have dinner, where we'll have the exhibition part with a nice view on the city and the mountains. And as I said, it's, the, it's a, a nice place to mingle together. Maybe we can go on the next slide. And there you can see the city. I hope still that convince you too. Um, that's a bit more or less the view from the conference venues on the right side. Um, so it's it's important to me to discuss the topics, but it's also more important to meet after pandemics to meet friends and new partners. That's for us very important. That's why we have we are meeting in the old town of Switzerland in, in of the old town of Bern to have these three and four days, three and a half days to exchange. Maybe you can go to the last slide from my side. And one key element for us was that we have a sustainable conference in all ways. So I will not go through the seven points, but um, it's important to act sustainability, but in all the three dimensions. So it's not just about the car carbon neutral event. It's also about we have the social dimension and the economic dimension. And that's why we drafted the sustainability concept and you can download and you can use it for all the future conferences. And I think that was for, for Switzerland. This was a key element to bring in you to Switzerland in the most sustainable way. It could be by train, but it could be also virtually. So almost all sessions, I think all sessions will be somehow um, streamlined and broadcast and you will have the chance to particip participate in the discussion. Um, if you have any questions regarding logistics, you, you just can follow all the time the tweet account and Facebook account Road to Burn, and there we update all the time um, the, the latest information. But now I want to give the, maybe Farrell, if allow, I just give the floor directly to my colleague is sitting in, in, next to me and to give him more information on, on traveling to Switzerland, how the situation looks like. Thanks. Yes, please go ahead, Stefan. Thank you, Farrell. Thank you, Benjamin. Also, a very, warm, very warm welcome from my side. I'm going to be with my team in charge to ensure that all logist logistics for the actual uh, conference will be taking place and that everybody will be safe and sound during the time in Switzerland. So for the next couple of minutes, I would like just to give you a brief overview about currently travel arrangements, arrival, uh, manifests and uh, related in, in particular to the COVID pandemic. So what is currently in place and uh, what are the things to look at when you're trying or when you're going to book your flight and uh, overnight stay to Switzerland? Well, at the moment, the good news, there is no quarantine obligations when arriving to Switzerland. Uh, that um, being said, it's something that's changing, constantly changing. But as Benjamin already mentioned, if there are any major changes, they will be also mentioned on Twitter. So please follow that. And there you can make sure that you will be permanently up to date with current developments. If you want to make sure that you're getting everything right when preparing your trip to Bern, um, you can pursue a travel check. The travel check is actually a website that has been put in place by the government, by the Swiss government, where you can have or look up your starting country, where you're coming from. And from there, you can pursue the various steps, what to follow and what to do to have a safe trip to Switzerland and what are the requirements that you actually need to undertake when booking and uh, coming to the country, to our country. One thing that is massively important is when you're arriving by plane, you are um, obliged to fill an entry form. And all this information with the detailed links, I'll just put into the, the chat now, um, the link where you will find further details on the logistics. This site is always being updated as soon as we have some, some news. So make sure that probably you put this into your browser's favorites, and uh, there you will be up to date to all changes and the, the requirements that you will need on your travel plan. Um, the second thing which is very important, uh, apart from the fact that uh, Switzerland is uh, requesting when arriving, also your airline may have specific requirements when boarding the planes. 
please check these requirements with your airline directly on their website because they will give you some further details on that. Um, also related to visas, probably we go to the next slide, which is the visa requirements in general. So in order to make everything right, please indicate when registering on the website that uh, on the, the system that has been indicated that you do require a visa. Upon approval of your in-person attendance, we will then as a host country issue that letter of support, which we will be sending to your behalf. And you can then book an appointment with the respective embassy or Swiss consulate in your country of residence. In certain cases, um, there are some representations of Switzerland which are located not directly um, in your country or will have some uh, uh, consulate, uh, consulates that are responsible for certain areas. So therefore, we recommend to look at the indicated website, which is swissvisa.ch, where you can spot actually the next and the responsible consulate or uh, representation abroad which is responsible where you can apply for your visa. This is one very important part. And of course, please make sure that you will bring along the letter of support that will be issued by us. Maybe we'll go to the next slide. In Bern, so once you have arrived to Switzerland, you will then most probably take the train either from Geneva or Zurich airport to Bern. As you arrive in Bern and you have a booked reservation in one of the hotels, which, by the way, are just all maximum 15 minutes and most of them even 10 minutes walking distance from the actual conference venue and also directly at the conference venue, there are hotel rooms available, of course, you will can take all the public transport system in Bern free of charge. So with, with a confirmed reservation in Bern, all public transports are free of charge, which is also um, part of this sustainability concept so that uh, you're traveling green within the city. Um, then upon the receipt of your confirmation, this will give you also access with a password to a website where you can book your hotel rooms directly at the preferential rate if indicating that you're attending at the World Data Forum. So this will be sent to you, all the access, as soon as you're confirmed with the in-person confirmation through the system. Then um, one very important message for all attendees that are going to come to the conference venue in person is that the access provided the pandemic is currently only possible with the Swiss or European certificate of full vaccination or a, neg a valid negative test, either PCR or antigen rapid test for the next valid for either 72 or 48 hours. And uh, we will put up uh, from our side also a testing center that all people that require testing will have the possibility to get an antigen rapid test at the entrance of the venue. So um, that being said, this will be the two ways to access the venue and to obtain the badge to attend the conference. For all people who might unfortunately not be able to travel to Switzerland, actually the sessions will be live streamed. The, the hybrid sessions from the venue online to the platform. So it will give everyone, as mentioned, a very inclusive possibility to attend all the events being held on site in Switzerland. Um, on the, the website I just also sent in the chat, please make sure that you'll visit also the, the FEQ part that is the document that is actually able to be downloaded. Loaded. There you will find some further links that will help you to actually properly prepare your trip to Switzerland. So we're very much looking forward, welcome, welcoming you all. And therefore I'll hand back to Farel. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Stefan. Uh, I see a lot of questions linked to, linked to logistic coming up in the chat window. And uh, please leave your questions in the chat window. We'll pick uh, them and then respond to them during the uh, last part of the webinar. Uh, we, we're also responding to a few in the chat window. Um, so please follow them as well. So I will now move on to the next speaker here with us. Um, uh, so we, our next speaker is Javier uh, Trisoldi, who is the founder of GeoCensus, a Latin American based foundation for geo open data advocacy. He has organized many participative data events and is deeply involved with data revolution and has promoted programs for capacity building at the national statistics offices, advocating for the use and production of open data. Uh, and he's also a very active member of the program committee and advocate for inclusive and equitable participation. So I'll pass it over to Javier now, who will share uh, with us how and uh, what are the different networking opportunities at the World Data Forum. Over to you, Javier. Hello there. I hope you hear me well. I will cut off my video because of the broadband. Not really easy when you speak from the global south, but anyway, you can identify me in the in the presentation. Um, is it is it the, the sound is it going right? Okay, Maria. Yes, yes, Javier, we can hear okay. you. Okay, great. Okay, what what uh, what my speech would be is that you are all welcome, not only for the in-person participation, but also to the remote participation you will be performing. Uh, first of all, uh, a parochial announcement, say a housekeeping announcement would be related to the, the meet and jazz event we will going to have, because although we are trying to respect all COVID the regulations in, in Switzerland, we're going to have nice events. As you know, data can be a language or what the data says is a language, but also music is a language. So we are going to try out that at the event with the meet and jazz event. Also, there's going to be a gala dinner that would be also to, to mingle and to network in the in-person event. Um, Another thing uh, very important to participate and to take advantage of the event would be to use the interactive platform we, we have used in the previous virtual World Data Forum. This it is basically to, for participation, not only to watch all the presentations, but also to speak with other participants. And this has been really impactful at, at last meeting. And that's why we are having such a a great summoning and, and, and convening of people that are really used to, to this kind of, of presentation and also interactions through the platform. This is important and this is a sort of a one-to-one -one relationship. But what we came out with is, uh, let's say, many-to-many -many relationship that can be done remotely, uh, registering for the meetup kind of, of uh, events. That is to say, if you go to the UN Stat Data Forum, then you will find the possibility to register for a meetup. Maybe Farjal can, can copy the, the link to register. And if you do it with enough time, you will be like an official meetup for the World Data Forum. And this is uh, really transcendent that if you would like to take up the participation and the point of view and the stakes for a specific uh, issues that you may be interested in. And what you can do is to uh, gather around and to include or stakeholders related to the topics you may be interested in. And after that, what, what you can do is to hear those uh, proposals and those sessions that are related uh, and you can, get a grasp of what's going on in the world. And after that, you can discuss it and hold debate with these teams that are introduced at, at the World Data Forum and include your own local perspective. What's the use of this is that you would, after that, try to outreach to the, to the panelists that are talking and have a collective interaction with them. 
that would be really useful for everyone so that we could involve you and we could get you engaged with the, with the whole event. Uh, when, when, when you have that point of view, then you have a richer discussion with the participating sessions, those that are in person, uh, that are streamed in person, and also with a remote location that are being registered. You can also include other, others, other participants from your region and from the country and from those that you may be interested in and make it more interested, interesting in that regard. Uh, remember that these local meetup registration, the post meetup re registration, you have until the 31st of August when you will uh, you will be you no know, visiting the website and, and finding more details. And so on. I strongly recommend to do this. This is a practice that has been used for many many kind of events and global events like this, and you could really put your city and your country in the map of the discussion of the World Data Forum. Uh, I strongly also suggest that you summon all included parties, not only those that may be coming from the official statistic realm, but also those that come from other government agencies related to data, the civil society, of course, and, and at the academia and international organizations that may be working locally so go ahead try to find your own local meetup and you will gain an insight and knowledge thank you and over to you Fayad. thank you so much javier for sharing such exciting networking opportunities um uh we we will be sharing a lot of this information as well through our uh, twitter account um I, I see that we have the Twitter account in the chat window as well. Uh, please uh, feel free to follow follow our Twitter page and for the most up to date information. Um, now I'll turn into the turn to the questions that we received from the participants uh, sent in advance. Uh, but I would highly encourage everybody to leave your questions in the chat window uh, so that we can respond to any of your queries here um, since we are all here together today. Um, I'll turn my first question to um, Gabriella and Francesca. So we received a question, uh, which is, uh, what is the World Data Forum? Uh, what does the World Data Forum plan to do in order to build capacity in the Global South uh, pertaining to data? Over to you, Francesca, first, and then we'll move on to Gabriella. Thank you, Fariel. Uh the global south I, I, the way i see the the world data forum is really about coming together to identify to identify better solutions and to make sure that we have the tools the technology also the conceptual frameworks you know how we can ensure trust in data the principles etc so it's all about improving data and i think the essence of it is really improving that especially in the global south so most of what we do and most of what we discuss at the data forum is about uh, working especially to build that capacity in countries where those resources might be lacking and if you look at all the outcome documents since the beginning very much the focus was very much on building capacity and ensuring the financing mechanisms to to uh, support the implementation of those of those actions to build capacity and in particular over the last two or three years with the establishment of the Bear network that is behind you know the action to implement the Dubai declaration improving funding is not just more funding but also improving the way we use the funds and improving the way we work with countries putting countries on the driving seat and putting countries uh, as the main uh, decision makers on how those funds are utilized and how uh, we focus you know the, the the activities to build capacity so in essence uh, i would say almost everything we discussed at the forum and all the actions and all the interventions all the new initiatives that are launched are about building capacity and are about especially uh, 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 paying attention to what is needed in countries in the global south, including financing. 
over to you. Thank you so much, Francesca. Uh, Gabriela, any thoughts on how uh, to build capacity in the global south? Thank you, Faria. Uh, yes, uh, actually agreeing with what uh, Francesca said, maybe I could expand a little bit. Uh, that one of the aims of the forum is also um, not not only to discuss uh, substantive uh, presentations and have substantive uh, sessions, but also to raise awareness. And I think that is a very important function of such a forum, uh, where so many uh, people from so many uh, countries are getting together, and uh, not only uh, in terms of numbers, but also in terms of uh, heterogeneity, the, uh, meaning that uh, the whole data ecosystem is somehow represented in uh, in uh, the forum. Uh, so I think this is a very good uh, opportunity uh, for raising awareness uh, uh, for data and data and capacities, uh, and also uh, to 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 uh, monitor how the implementation of the Cape Town Global Action Plan and also of the uh, other uh, outcome documents of uh, previous fora uh, are implemented and how uh, these help in uh, providing more capacity uh, in uh, in the global south actually also in other regions of the world uh, and to call the attention of decision makers that it's not only a question of money or financing but it's also a question of skills of human resources uh, appropriately skilled, uh, high-level human resources uh, that uh, could and should be available in uh, statistical offices and in other data production engines, let's say. Uh, so I think this is also a very important part of the forum where we can uh, monitor the implementation of the uh, outcome documents of the previous fora, especially of the Cape, Cape Town Global Action Plan, which, uh, which specifically calls for uh, appropriate um, uh, capacities and appropriate capacity building uh, and also to uh, have many people get together who can share their experience and that also sharing experience also always improves capacities it means that uh, people can uh, see what others are doing uh, uh, experts of one field can see what experts in other fields are doing uh, what solutions uh, they adopted and how this helped uh, their data capacity. So I think this is a very important uh, element of the forum uh, to, to help uh, people uh, get more knowledge, more insights into what's happening in the world, in that world of data. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabriela. Um, I'll move on to my next question that I received from the, uh, the audience here. Um, how do we get the most out of the World Data Forum? What does the what does the com committee need from us to make this a success? Um, I'll start with Javier and then maybe Gabriela. Javier. Yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, basically, when we speak about uh, a global forum or also a massive collaboration event, which is like adding up the efforts of many, many, many people that to be online. And we have seen this kind of experiences lately in hackathons and also in mapathons that are beginning to be involved in the, in the data ecosystem, also in the statistical ecosystem, is that we are uh, conscious, uh, conscious about that we are uh, we are part of something that is higher than our own wills. That is to say, we are belonging to some, a project that is uh, broader than our own idea. And going to the basics, I would say that although it's kind of cliche thing, uh, uh, the, the global thinking and the local acting is really important here. That is to say, even though we may not be able to grasp all the ideas that may be available for us to do so. We can be really aware of what is going on in our own, own territories, in our own areas, and we can act on that based on what is taught around the world. And that, I think it's really important to take advantage of this event, that we take all those inputs that will be really useful for us in the, in the local environment. 
in the in the in the, the, the local thinking of our own governance issues related to data. And also uh, another issue would be that we really understand that this is an event for everyone, that we would be should be inclusive. And uh, although it's another cliche, we should not leave anyone behind considering the discussion, but also the outreach of the analysis and the collection of data that will be decided upon the meeting. So I guess these two things like the, 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 the local act, actions and also the, 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 the learning of how to be equitable and to be inclusive with all people are very important. So thinking like that, I guess you'll get the most about it and also be in touch with many people that would be not only within your own meetup, but also in the in-person event, exchanging ideas and also trying to to be respectful of the COVID regulations, of course, if it's in person. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Javier. Uh, Gabriela, would you like to add something? Yes, thank you for your uh, thanks uh, to Javier for this uh, these comments. Uh, yes, I think uh, the personal presence in the forum helps a lot, of course, and uh, that would mean that uh, if where many people can uh, be present uh, in person, many participants can uh, attend in Bern. Uh, that helps networking and that helps building partnerships uh, at the forum. Uh, but of course, virtual presence is, uh, not, is a little bit more limited uh, in terms of how much uh, networking can be done, but still it's, it doesn't make, it, it still makes possible uh, networking for participants. And I think that is one of the very important aspects of the forum, uh, because very many uh, very fruitful professional partnerships uh, are built in uh, such at such occasions and uh, and uh, the uh, previous World Data Fora were well known for that. Uh, I think it would also help if uh, many of the speakers uh, would uh, publish their uh, their uh, presentations or their um, their uh, whatever they, they meant to say in uh, in the scientific journals. I think that would be a very good uh, uh, promotion of the forum also, but not so much, uh, but that is maybe not the most important, but to share the, the ideas, to share the solutions, to share the problems that they have overcome and to share the results of uh, their work. I think that would be also a very good uh, aspect if uh, we could do that. And of course, feedback from the participants is always something that uh, all organizers and all uh, program committees need uh, because there will be a next forum. And uh, in order to make uh, the series of fora and also the, the road uh, that we are uh, uh, traveling through uh, with this series of fora, because it's never a single event, it's always um, a process. Uh, it would help uh, make it more successful and make uh, make it more efficient in terms of uh, of uh, networking of partnerships and of sharing uh, experiences. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabriela. Um, I will now move on to a few logistic questions that we've been receiving through the chat window and also through the the registered participants uh, but before the webinar. And um, so what what we have now is that when and how would we get confirmation for registered in par in person participation? And I think linked to that is when was the, the letter visa uh, letter be received by for the participants. Stefan, uh, would you like to answer that one? Thank you, Farrell. Yes. Actually, the the um, the approval process will be you have to register within the Indico system to par participate in the event. And uh, once uh, all the parameters have been met and you have been confirmed as an in-person participant, this will then be sin uh, will receive uh, information that this par the participant has been confirmed and we will after that issue a letter of a letter of support, which will then be sent to the participant uh, together with all the the information that we rece received through the uh, registration system. This includes also a copy of the passport, which will then be 
required to submit to the embassy or consulate. This is actually the process. So once you have registered and then you have received the formal con confirmation out of the system, you will then receive a couple of days later the uh, letter of support. This being said, um, generally we will issue the letter with in the next couple of days, once the formal con uh, confirmation has been, been sent to the participant, and usually the visa process may take up to 15 working days. At the moment, I would suggest it's even a bit less than the 15 days, 15 working days. This is about how um, how the process is actually being done. Thank you so much, Stefan. Um, Paul, if I may pass it on to you now, uh, giving a bit of um, details on why some participants haven't re received their approvals and uh, why there's a delay in uh, that process. Over to you, Paul. Yes, thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, just wanted to explain. Uh, um, of course, since the 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 limit we have a limit of about 600 participants we have to go through the registrants uh, a bit thoroughly it won't be just the uh, first come first serve in the registrations uh, the reason why some people haven't uh, gotten the approval yet is because perhaps um someone from the same organization or the same same country have have has already applied so we Try to put a hold on it, so because we want a pretty balanced uh, representation across geographic and data community. So, so uh, yeah, we've had some 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 questions uh, about how come uh, some a person has has a, received the approval, but uh, his or her colleagues in the same organization organization haven't. It's it's because of that. It's it's we're trying to hold on it to make sure we have a equal or balanced representation across data communities and and geographic uh, representation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, yeah, um, thanks for explaining that to our participants here. Um, so one of the questions that we received uh, was, will virtual participants have access to all the, session, all the sessions? Uh, Stefan, over to you for that one. Thank you. Well, actually, indeed, we will have all sessions that are being mentioned in the program will be streamed online through a platform. So all the sessions that are indicated in the official program will have the possibility that people can connect online. This will be done through our technical uh, partners and uh, therefore possibility to attend these sessions also online if they cannot participate in person is effectively possible. Thank you so much, um, uh, Stefan. Um, I also received a question from the chat here uh, asking if the full agenda of the, the forum was available to the public. And the answer to the question is yes, it is available. The most up-to-date um, agenda is on our website. Um, we are at this point not accepting any more uh, session proposals. Uh, we received over 500 session proposals that our program committee has sifted through to achieve this program. And um, uh, just to add on, I have another question, which would be, I think, the last question that I can take at this moment. Uh, I see a lot of them have been responded through the chat window as well. Um, so one of the questions is how can the private sector um, a part a company participate in uh, in uh, as a speaker or other opportunities? Um, so firstly, I'll uh, pass it on to Benjamin. Maybe uh, Benjamin, you can share a bit of uh, private sector participation um, at the forum, and then I can talk about a little of how, uh, at this point, the private sector can participate uh, beyond the sessions. Over to you, Benjamin. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the conference is open to everybody. I mean, everybody can register at the moment. And as it was said uh, from, from several now, I mean, it's the main idea of the UN World Data Forum to, to have all different stakeholders there. So it's great to have private sector. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not the idea to have a conference of just statisticians and it's the UN World Data Forum. So we talk about data, 
And, uh, and of course, we know that the private sector produces data too. So we want to have them there. So if you have friends in the private sector, just share the link and tell them they have to come to Bern, who at least they participate in, in virtual form. Thank you so much, Benjamin. And to add to that, um, uh, 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 please write to us on the data forum email address. And uh, if you have any blogs that you would like to share, share your thoughts through, through your blogs, or um, you can host a local meetup. Uh, the registration for that is currently open. So that is also some ways to participate uh, from your sector. Um, so we're towards the end of the webinar now. So I will be, uh, no more questions anymore, but hopefully a lot of your questions have been addressed in the chat window. I would like to thank all of the participants here for your questions and all of the panelists here. Um, uh, thank you so much for your time and sharing your uh, thoughts and uh, answering those questions here. Uh, I would like to remind um, all the participants here that the registration for the local meetups and the in-person participation is open until 31st August. And uh, the open call for a consultation on the outcome document is also open until September. Um, for the virtual uh, registration participation, we will open uh, that in September. Uh, we have a capacity of 10,000 uh, participants to attend through the virtual participation, which uh, exceeded last year during the virtual forum. So we really look forward to a lot of interactive participation through our virtual app as well. Um, details will be provided shortly. Um, Last but not the least, uh, follow our website and Twitter for most up-to-date information. Our Twitter handle is UN Data Forum. Um, uh, so follow uh, the Data Forum where we will be posting a lot of the most of the update up-to-date information. Thank you, everybody, and have a good day, uh, evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye. Thank you.